Hi, I'm Mark Sloboda, and this is The Real Politique. In 1997, then-Senator Joe Biden, ranking member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, publicly laughed about and mocked the complaints of Russian politicians about their security concerns at the time over the eastward expansion of NATO towards Russian borders, running roughshod over promises made to Gorbachev just a few years earlier that NATO wouldn't move one inch to the east if the Soviet Union withdrew military forces from Eastern Europe. Talked about they don't want this NATO expansion, they know it's not in their security interests, and on and on, and said, well, and if you do that, we may have to look to China. And I couldn't help using the colloquial expression from my state by saying to Zaganov, lots of luck in your senior year. Um, you know, uh, good luck. And if, not, if that doesn't work, try Iran. Um, and uh, I'm serious. I said that to them, and these were, very, and 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 they know. I knew. They knew. Everybody knows that that is not an option. And everybody knows. Every one of those leaders acknowledges and needs, and they resent it. But they need. They need to look west. And the question is, whether well, this is designed to completely shut them out. Well. 26 years later, President Joe Biden isn't laughing dismissively anymore about Russia's warnings not to expand NATO eastward, nor about the Sino-Russian strategic partnership, nor about the growing Russian-Iranian partnership, nor about the geopolitical gravity gathering about all three together. One of the foremost axioms of realist international relations and foreign policy is that of the need for geopolitical balancing to keep any one potential rival or group of rivals from growing too strong, as well as the eternal principle of divide and conquer. Any idiot understands this. Henry Kissinger knew that well. As Secretary of State under Nixon, he exploited the Sino-Soviet split to advance geopol U.S. geopolitical interests and weaken the Soviet Union. He advised President Nixon that the United States, as it sought to profit from the enmity between Moscow and Beijing, needed to play this balance of power game totally unemotionally. Right now, we need the Chinese to correct the Russians and to discipline the Russians. But in the future, it would be the other way around. He said, in 20 years, your successor, if he's as wise as you, will wind up leaning towards the Russians against the Chinese. Well, the U.S. political elite, like Joe Biden, suffering from a fatal conceit of hubris, resulting from the supremacist ideology of American exceptionalism, and reluctant to give up the heady unipolar moment of hegemony in the 1990s, forgot or ignored these most basic of geopolitical maxims, and came to believe that the U.S. need not and should not balance or compromise with any great power or potential rival that does not recognize U.S. hegemony. But it is under President Joe Biden that this hubris and its geopolitical consequences have finally reached their peak and culmination. It has been Biden's explicit national security strategy and aggressive foreign policy since he took office to simultaneously poke and provoke and confront Russia, China, and Iran all at once in their own backyards, cloaked under the pure Manichaean rhetoric that it is he that will lead the democratic world to confront the autocratic one. Talk about your messianic fantasies. Well, two years in, how's that going for you now, Joe? Good luck in your very senior year, as uh, you say. So, end of quote. Repeat the line. Who typed a question mark on the teleprompter? For the last time, anything you put on that prompter, Burgundy will read. Russia and China now have an ironclad, strong, no limits political, military, and economic partnership, stronger than any alliance. And Iran has burgeoning strategic partnerships with both 
and has joined Russia and China in a free trade agreement with the Eurasian Economic Union and in the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, which many in the West view as a Eurasian rival alliance and counter to NATO. Russia, China, and Iran all have very different political and economic systems, diverging national interests, faiths, history, and culture. But it is overweening U.S. hubris and antagonism that has pushed them all together so concretely in a mutual defensive geopolitical posture, each having the other's backs. The Biden admin is reduced to impotently and publicly threatening China and Iran over their support for Russia in its confrontation with the West to prevent NATO from expanding eastwards into Ukraine. Sanctions, hybrid warfare, color revolutions, they no longer have significant effect as punishment for the U.S. hegemon to force compliance. Too late, the U.S. foreign policy blob and commentariat are starting to ask in increasingly shrill and worried tones if the U.S. is suffering from imperial overstretch, from trying to play global hegemon, and if they can really take on Russia and China and Iran and others all at the same time in their own backyards. And at last coming to the, well, the only logical conclusion, <laughs> no, they cannot. Increasingly, it is being acknowledged that the Russian, Chinese, Iranian, defensive alliance is becoming the nucleus and foundation of an alternative world order to that of U.S.-led Western hegemony, that it is giving birth to a multipolar world order. And it's all happening under President Joe Biden's watch, and as a result of his hubris and aggressive policy. Karma gets the last laugh, Joe. Это хорошая возможность на практике, в мирной обстановке, в формате масштабных учений организовать взаимодействие и взаимопонимание между военнослужащими наших воинских контингентов.